எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் தான் தமிழ் தெரியும் அதுக்கு தான் உங்கள் பர்மிஷன் எடுத்துகிட்டு நான் இங்கிலீஷில் பேசுகிறேன் காமரேட் அன்வர் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணுவான் ஸோ காமரேட் என்ன பர்த் பிளேஸ் மெட்ராஸ் ஜென்ரல் ஹாஸ்பிட்டலில் ஸோ அதுக்கு தான் கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் தமிழ் தெரியும் பேச முடியாது உங்களுக்கு எல்லாருக்கு வணக்கம் ரெட் செல்யூட் சொல்லிட்டு நான் இங்கிலீஷில் பேசுகிறேன் ஸோ கம்ப்ளீட் ஜி ராமகிருஷ்ணன் மெம்பர் ஆஃப் பொலிட் பியூரோ ஆஃப் தி சிபிஐஎம் சீனியர் லீடர்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆர் புதுச்சேரி அண்ட் காம்ரேட்ஸ் ஹூ ஆர் அட்டெண்டிங் திஸ் நேஷ்னல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் ஐ திங்க் திஸ் நேஷ்னல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் இஸ் ஐ மீன் திஸ் ஸ்டேட் லெவல் பார்ட்டி கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் இஸ் பீங் ஹெல்ட் இட் எ வெரி குரூஷியல் டைம் both for the future of uh, puducherry and that of india and i think this is the first uh, such conference that is being held after puducherry acquired an independent organizing committee status of the communist party of india marxist and therefore my congratulations to all of you here and my revolutionary greetings on behalf of the party central committee and the politburo coming to puducherry that the bjp and the prime minister was to supposed to come here with the propaganda that the double engine government will always be helpful and useful for the people and for the development of the concerned state now double engine is always got a double meaning and the double meaning is that when that when there's a double engine on the train one engine is in the front one engine is in the back the front engine when it pulls the train in the one direction if the back engine pulls the train in the other direction the train doesn't move and if a train doesn't move and stands at the same place it will degenerate that is the meaning of modi's double engine government and we have seen uh, we have seen that continue in in uh, goa in karnataka in madhya pradesh in maharashtra and northeastern states and but most importantly in the state of uttar pradesh what is said and what is actually done is entirely opposite of each other uttar pradesh today has the lowest lowest human development indicators in spite of this double engine going on for there for the last 7 years so this double engine we have to be double careful and ensure that there's a double defeat for this double engine that is only then that the state and the people and the country can progress in a double engine government the one engine the engine of the center central government take the language issue the central government engine says that hindi should be the national language and that should be imposed on all people in india the state engine on the other hand says no we reject the imposition of hindi and our mother tongue is what we cherish and we will use our mother tongue we will uphold the constitutional provision of the eighth schedule all 22 languages in india under the eighth schedule are national languages must be treated equally with equal respect and equal rights that is the contradiction between the two engines that you will find like this you will find these contradictions in every single issue and the most important issue that is coming up in many states of the country is the issue of the governors and the role of the governors being utilized by the central government in order to destabilize the elected democratically elected state governments non bjp state governments and through the process the office of the governor is being thoroughly misused to achieve the object of destabilization of these governments we have seen that happening in in your neighboring kerala we have seen it happening in your neighboring tamil nadu where the tamil nadu assembly had to pass a new legislation separating the governor from being the chancellor of the universities in the states we have seen it happening on other matters some other matters in telangana where the telangana elected government is in loggerheads with the governor we have seen that happening in west bengal earlier where the state assembly had to pass laws in order to separate the governor from the 
being the chancellor of the universities. So in all the states, and here you find the governor being position being misused, and the lieutenant governors are actually one of the classic examples of how instead of moving towards giving full statehood to the union territories of, Delhi, of, uh, of Pondicherry, on the contrary, the lieutenant governor's office is, is utilized in order to convert it into a satellite of the central government. Now, this is the manner in which federalism is being assaulted in our country, and this sort of federalism, in the name of a double engine government, this sort of federalism is something not acceptable. And from this convention, you, from this conference, from, on behalf of the people of Puducherry, we have to unequivocally say, Puducherry must be given full statehood, and this full statehood must come with all the rights that are there enshrined in the Constitution under the spirit of federalism. Today, along with the destruction of federalism, even the democratic expression, verdicts and mandates of the people are being destroyed. The BJP today has employed a new principle that whoever may win the elections, the BJP will form the government. And that is the new law for the BJP. We've seen that happening in Goa. We've seen that happening in Karnataka, in Madhya Pradesh, in Maharashtra, in many of the northeastern states. So what is the meaning of, of this? That people reject the BJP, but the BJP forms the government by misusing its tremendous money power, its power of control of the central agencies which it unleashes against those who oppose it, with the ED and the CBI working as the political agents of this government, and in that process target the political opposition and thereby you ensure that you create a majority when you don't have it. And this various techniques are used for this. In Puducherry, I'm told, there's a new technique. And the new technique was the nominated MLAs. And these nominated MLAs can convert a minority into a majority for the BJP because they have been given the right to vote. So in this way, in this way even when people reject them, through manipulation, they come and form the governments and on that basis control. On that basis control to, impl to implement the agenda that they are setting out to do. So this is a dangerous assault on democracy and this will have to be resisted by all the states where this sort of interference is going on and particularly by smaller union territories who want statehood but is not being given like, like Puducherry, this has to be very strongly resisted. There, it, under the Indian constitution, school education is the right of the elected state governments and education is in the concurrent subject that means both the centre and the states have a role to play. Using the COVID pandemic as the excuse, the new education policy, the national education policy now, it is called 2020, was imposed on all the states without consulting the states properly as it should be. The net result is what? In implementing the, this new education policy, all the government schools, in the name of consolidation are being closed down all over the country. Because school education, being under the state governments, their syllabus and what is taught to the children, in which language it is taught to the children, are all decided by the state governments. They want to impose Hindi. They want to control the syllabus of what is the, uh, what do the students learn. And they want to, that is important for them. Because if you want to condition the students to grow up accepting the fascistic Hindutva Rashtra ideology of the RSS and this BJP, then the school education syllabus will have to be controlled by the central government and not by the state governments. If that cannot be done, close down government schools. Those who can afford will get private education where private education, you can control their syllabus through various uh, uh, methods, but 
the entire effort is to create a mindset among the younger generation that is amenable to their fascistic Hindutva Rashtra project. And that is why controlling of the universities, attacking reason, rationality, controlling school education, all this is important. And you have just now, I think, uh, passed a resolution on, uh, on the closure of schools in Pudicherry. This is happening in all the states. And this has have to be resisted. We want our children to get scientific, democratic education based on reason and rationality, not on obscurantism, superstition and blind faith, which is what the RSS BJP want for their fascistic project to succeed. And this is a big battle in which we as the CPIM will have to play an important role in upholding scientific temper and fighting against irrationality and unreason. So, so what is being, being done today? We must really understand this correct, properly. What is being done today is to create, that in order to create this fascistic Hindutva Rashtra based on rabid intolerance, based on attacks on minorities, based on attacks on reason and rationality, this Hindutva Rashtra that they want to create, this fascistic Hindutva Rashtra, needs the complete destruction of the existing constitution of India. Because with secular democracy, the four fundamental pillars of our constitution, secular democracy, economic sovereignty, social justice and federalism, if these four strengthen, then the objective of a fascistic Hindu Rashtra gets weakened. To facilitate that sort of a transformation of the, of the character of India, they have to destroy the existing constitution and that is why every single pillar is under assault today. And this is the challenge before us because safeguarding this constitution is safeguarding the character of India as a secular democratic republic. And on the basis of safeguarding this character, we as the Communist Party will move towards transforming and changing India to a better India, towards socialism, not to a regressive, backward-looking, fascistic, rapidly intolerant Hindu Rashtra. That is the battle. Do we want to take India into the brightness of the future, or do you allow India to go into the darkness of its past, which is what exactly that BJP and RSS are trying to do. That is the battle in which the CPIM has declared very, very, very clearly and firmly that we will meet this battle, defend India today, save India and its character in order to change it for the better tomorrow and move towards the direction of socialism and not backwards into regression into the darkness of medievalism is what our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, is actually depicting in, in many ways. The Supreme Court, in that verdict that it gave on the Babri Masjid's destruction and allowed the temple to be constructed, said the temple will be constructed by a temple committee. Actually, that inauguration for the construction of the temple was done by a temple committee headed by the Indian Prime Minister, now Mr. Modi. So temple construction is to led by the Prime Minister. Then the Kashi Vishwanath corridor in a religious ceremony is, is actually inaugurated by the Prime Minister. The installation of the national symbol on the new parliament building is done with a Hindu ritual by the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister performs the puja recently in Kedarnath before the Himachal and the Gujarat elections were announced. And the RSS regularly tweets what is the program, monthly program of the temple visits of the Prime Minister with the dates and the venues. So what is the image being constructed? That we are already a Hindu Twaraj. So therefore the entire thing is accompanied by new laws on cow protection against love jihad and all these targeting the minorities. So this way, the character of Indian Republic is sought to be changed. That is what has to be resisted, fought and defeated.
concerned or religious faith of the people are concerned, the CPM has always been in the forefront, will continue to be in the forefront to defend that right of every individual for their choice of which religion, which faith they want to participate in and belong to. As individuals, as people doing it, yes. But what does the Indian constitution say? That as the Indian state, there will not be any one single religion that the state will, will propagate. And the state will therefore remain neutral. And that was the principle of secularism in the Indian constitution, which we correctly understand as separation of religion from the state and government. But the Indian government has all along, unfortunately, have been using this concept to say all religions are treated equal and therefore the state and the government will not project any one religion. That is what is being violated today. While the, while the right of every individual to practice their own religion is to be defended rigorously, the state should not be allowed to today convey, convey that impression that it actually fosters one religion and on the other, through its various other actions, actually targets the religious minorities and that is what destroys the secular democratic character of the Indian constitution and the country. Third, to wanting to change the character of the secular democratic republic of India, we have the emergence of a corporate communal nexus that has come into being, as a result of which the Indian national assets are being mercilessly looted. Everything is being privatized today. And in the process, you have the tremendous growth of inequalities. The rich are becoming richer, and they are becoming richer even faster than ever before, even under the conditions of COVID pandemic, and the poor are becoming poorer. The rates of unemployment today are the highest in our country. Our inflation is soaring. You have a situation of growing hunger, where the global indices of hunger have said India is in a very, very serious situation as far as hunger, situa hunger is concerned. We have a growth in poverty. Two-thirds of the people who have become poor during the COVID years, two-thirds of the global poor is the contribution of India. So you have people's miseries on the rise, but the wealth of the rich also on the rise. This corporate communal nexus is actually looting our country and our resources while imposing untold miseries on the people which, we'll, which we have to resist through even greater and mightier struggles of the peoples. We have seen the historic farmer struggle. We are seeing the, the big struggles being led by the working class today against privatization. You have seen the struggle of the banks and the LIC and the other employees and other federations against privatization, but these by themselves cannot stop, cannot stop this process of this corporate communal nexus looting our country. And this, if this has to stop, a broader unity, a broader unity will have to be built and work towards ensuring that the broadest possible unity of secular forces Mobilization of secular forces, broadest mobilization of secular forces against Hindutva communism in order to isolate and defeat the BJP. That has to be ensured. It's only through that process that we can reverse these policies and save India today as we were talking of earlier. We have to be prepared for strengthening the people's struggles and in Puducherry also. I'm sure that all of us today are preparing for bigger struggles in order to defend the rights of the people, in order to defend the values of our Indian constitution and its character of our republic, and in order to fight growing authoritarian attacks and the use of draconian laws like the UAPA, etc., to curb all dissent. Anybody who dissents against this government is actually being taken, I mean, such action is taken against them that they are kept under detention. So these are big battles that in the days to come and for that 
we all have to steel ourselves in order to face these battles and I'm sure in Puducherry also, after this conference or convention, you will also take the appropriate measures in order to mobilize the larger sections of the people and face these challenges and to defend the rights of the people and to advance the interests of our country. We are, we are now hearing the propaganda of what is called the Amrit Kal. That Amrit Kal is that we have reached a period where it's Amrutam. That is, oh, you call it Amrutam, no? no. Oh, so Amrit Kal. So that is a period of prosperity and the best situation for everybody, every individual. Amrit, or, or, or what is called Amrutam, according to our Puranic uh, traditions, Amrutam was created when you had the, the churning of the oceans, or what is called the Samudra Manthan. From that emerged one Kalash of Amrutam and one Kalash of poison. And the Puranic story goes that as soon as Amritam and poison both came, the Rakshasas and Devatas who were waiting for the Amritam, the first ones to lay their hands on the Amritam were the Rakshasas, they took it and they ran away. And the Devatas managed to get it back from them. That is a different story how they managed to get it back from them. But today we are at a stage where the the Amrutam has been taken by the Rakshasas and run away. We have to bring it back for the sake of India, for the sake of our people, for the sake of our prosperity. And that is the struggle that we have to, be, we have to involve ourselves in. Like the Devatas succeeded then in bringing them back, bringing Amrutam back, we will have to now intensify people's struggles. On that basis, mobilize the largest, largest, by the broadest, mobilization of secular-minded people in order to take up this challenge of, of this fascistic vision of how to change the character of India that is taking place and to save India in order to change India for the better and move towards socialism. And that is the challenge before India, the people, and that is the big responsibility for the CPIM, which we are committed to discharge to intensify these struggles for, for the sake of people's welfare, future, and that of safeguarding India and its secular democratic character. I only convey my revolutionary greetings to the, for all of you in Puducherry, that in the coming days you have big battles before you, big challenges. This the Puducherry is sought to be converted into a test case laboratory for the BJP, whether it's privatization, whether it's a, it's a question of various other policy measures that they are undertaking, whether it's the field of education, etc., and privatization of everything else as a test case in order to see how they can penetrate into the rest of South India. These are big issues and big battles for the sake of safeguarding the rights of the people of uh, Puducherry and for improving their livelihood in the future and the character of the cultures and society in Puducherry, in all these battles that the CPIM and all of you will come forward in much stronger and larger numbers in order to safeguard your culture, your traditions and your assets from being privatized and looted and in, those, in that way the struggles will move forward in a much stronger way and united way with this confidence I once again greet all of you, convey my revolutionary greetings and say Inkalab Zidabad to all of you here in this conference. <laughs>